Yeah, it was kind of inevitable that I talk about this. So far in my videos, I usually ramble about, at most, a handful of cartoons from Disney. However, I do actually like watching other cartoons and many animated movies beyond Disney. The only reason why I never ramble about them is because, well according to my polls at least, most of you guys in my audience seem to not care about them compared to the Disney shows that I do like to talk about. Thankfully, that changes because there is a new recent cartoon that completely took over the internet and the animation world, which is The Amazing Digital Circus. For those who somehow not have seen the pilot yet, it is a show about a woman who adopts the name of Pomni, who finds herself in a digital circus world of some sort, and so far at least, there doesn't seem to be a way out of it. Yeah, so for those who watched my channel and followed the two main shows I cover, it's pretty much another isekai story about a female protagonist trapped in an unfamiliar world. In just over two weeks, the pilot episode garnered 45 million views and it's still climbing as of writing this. As a result, a large fandom has already formed which includes some fellow friends, mutuals, and creators. And for the most part, I have seen mostly praise for this show. Although I have seen a fair amount of criticism towards it too. Still, with the amount of attention it got, I had to watch the pilot episode and ask, how amazing is the amazing digital circus really? Well at first glance, the show from the surface level appearance doesn't really look that amazing in my opinion. Now keep in mind, my expectations for animation are largely based on what I've seen from the big networks that air cartoons. This show is actually the first indie cartoon that I ever watched, so forgive me if I seem unfair for comparing it to other shows from more mainstream studios. But even with that caveat in mind, I can't ignore the significant differences in the way the show looks compared to what I'm used to. While I wouldn't say the art style looks bad, it's just very different for how bright it is. Personally, with a lot of the shows I watched, they usually have more muted colors which makes them feel a bit calm. But when watching the show, I feel like I'm on acid or something, which is probably the point of it, but it can be too distracting, especially for important moments where I should be focusing on the story. Besides the art style, there's also some things that I find a bit off in terms of their writing. I'm more particularly referring to the episode's plot structure. After the characters somewhat introduce themselves, the story diverges into two or technically three subplots. There's one that involves Pomni trying to find a way out. The other involves trying to gather the Gloinks and get rid of whatever monster that's associated with them. But then there's another that revolves around another character turned monster that goes around and destroys pretty much everything and supposedly hurts one of the characters. These subplots kind of felt disconnected to me and the only real connection between them is that Kane just solves the problems with the snap of his fingers, quite literally with one of them. There's a few smaller nitpicks that I also didn't enjoy personally. Some of the jokes in the show felt like they were a bit misplaced. Some of the episode's attempts of trying to creep out the viewers kind of fell flat for me. Also, I just find Kane's design rather unsettling, and I simply can't get used to him. Now yeah, I get that's the point, but I'm still gonna mark that against the show. Yeah, so far it sounds like that I don't really find the show that amazing, like what the name of it suggests. But before you click off and go to another video, there's still a lot more to say about the show. And once I got past my admittedly minor complaints, there's actually quite a lot to like about it. First thing that I like so far is the characters. Within a span of 25 minutes, the pilot episode did a pretty good job showing them off and making me actually care about them and like them to varying degrees. Out of all the characters, Pomni is the one that I like the most. You'd think that's a given since she is the main character, but interestingly enough, many stories actually fail to do that in my opinion. Pomni enters the world very confused and under denial, which is very normal of isekai characters. But the interesting twist we see is she has barely any idea about her past self prior to being digitized. In a way, Pomni's current personality is actually one of the most bland when you think about it considering she doesn't even seem to know herself. Uh, what's my name? However, that's ironically why I actually like her. She may seem one dimensional at first for just being a character who is going insane for being in denial, but her being a blank slate personality wise gives her the highest potential for growth. She may be trapped in another world, but that at least gives her an opportunity to build a new identity of her own. And I find that kind of story rather enticing to see. This is especially the case when you consider that we have already seen Pomni 
having some redeeming qualities that shows she has empathy for other people, which is something I unfortunately can't say for some of the other characters in the show. Thankfully, Ragatha is one of the few characters in the show that has some empathetic qualities. As a result, she and Pomni are my favorite characters so far. Out of all of them, Ragatha seems to have the most fleshed out personality. She's the most optimistic compared to the others, but she still suffers from the same existential dread with varying degrees in their ability to hide it. Also, when it comes to their character designs, I do like these two the most. Both of them can be very expressive, especially with Pomni, but they also have the more down-to-earth look considering they look essentially human, which gives them an edge in making them more relatable in my opinion. With that said, as much as I like Pomni and Ragatha a lot, it's hard for me to give similar praises to the other characters. For example, Zubul and Gengel could use some more character development. We don't really know much about them besides the fact that Gengel is a sad mess who hides behind a mask, and Zubul is very apathetic. Still, as much as I don't like those personalities, they do have qualities that I can somewhat relate with. I mean, I'm sure many have felt apathetic and sad for long stretches of time. Well, at least I did. As for the other major characters, they may not be as likable as Pomni and Ragatha, but they are characters that I really want to see and know more given what we have seen so far. Kinger, for example, is supposedly the one who's been trapped in the digital world for the longest, which means he likely knows the most about it besides maybe King. Aside from the lore though, Kinger's personality from what I've seen looks rather fascinating. He's clearly losing it and acts on edge for a lot of the pilot, but then at the same time, he seems to act pretty calm as if he's become used to the digital world, which may be the case, I don't know. Overall, He's just an interesting character with a backstory that I want to know more for the sake of building up the lore of the show. The same can be said about Kane too. Mildly unsettling looks aside, I actually do like him as a character. I get somewhat of a Bill Cipher vibe from him due to his creepiness and seemingly all-powerful abilities. But like Bill, Kane has some definite weaknesses as he clearly can't control everything that's going on in the digital world. Again, like Kinger, I have a ton of questions regarding Kane and his history. Like, is he someone who was the lead developer of the game? Or is he the built-in AI of the game that became sentient and trapped the developers who became the characters we see? Time will only tell what Kane is, and whether he is a victim of the game itself, or if he is an actual antagonist. Another character that stands out to me is Jax, largely due to his snarkiness with everyone. Admittedly, the first time I watched the pilot, I didn't like him for that. But after re-watching the pilot a few more times, I grew to at least find him interesting like Kinger and Kane. Part of me believes that Jax's snarkiness is his way of coping with the fact that he's been trapped in the digital world for years, and I'm sure everyone's personality is partially shaped in part from the situation of being trapped. But aside from having one of the more interesting personalities, Jax has some of the highest potential for exposing the truth behind the amazing digital circus. That leads me to the next major thing that I'd like, which is the actual world of the show. I know I did say I'm not too big of a fan with how the setting looks with its bright colors and all, but at the same time, I acknowledge that is the point of it. The world itself is supposed to be a game meant for everyone, including younger folks, hence why the setting looks bright and cheerful and why the characters are not able to swear. <laughs> Oh my god. However, while the world itself may look fun with its bright colors and admittedly adorable looking characters, mostly, YOU PARASITES! Underneath it all, there is a dark side, and the show makes it very clear. We see details as small as the show's theme, playing a portion in a loop, to Pomni outright seeing glimpses of the real world where the game is supposedly active in. While we have not seen much of the digital world besides the tent so far, there is a lot of potential for world building here. That also ties in all of the glimpses of lore that we have seen from this show so far. A few minutes of the pilot has loads of fuel for fan theories and many people have already created some. In fact, I created some personal theories and headcanons as well. And I'll talk more about them in some videos in the future. Make sure you subscribe so you can see them as soon as they come out. In all honesty, the lore of the show is the biggest reason why I am interested in seeing the next episode 
and follow the series to its inevitable conclusion. There are some smaller details from the show that I like as well. While the art style is not my favorite, I will give credit for the smoothness of the animation itself. Some might think that it's a given for a cartoon to have smooth animation, but I have seen some shows recently that kind of cut back on that and the characters look rather stiff to me. So with that in mind, I appreciate that even an indie show like this can keep the animation quality pretty well. Despite the dark and existentialist nature of the show, there were still some rather great comedic moments that always give me a laugh, ranging from the characters' facial expressions, to visual gags, to certain lines that the characters say. Clean up on aisle you! I'm on it, boss! Why are you like this? Also, I really like the voice acting behind each of the characters. I especially like Pomni and Kane's voices. The voice actors behind them really do a good job in really evoking the right emotions in a given moment, which heavily contributes why I like a lot of their moments. Another aspect of the show that I really like is the soundtrack. It's quite amazing to hear two very different kinds of music where one is very upbeat and fun, and then another one where it's serious and dark in order to emphasize just how dire of a situation Pomni is in. But aside from the music going very well with the overall vibe of the show, it just sounds really good on its own. It's definitely one of my favorite aspects so far. Overall, The Amazing Digital Circus is definitely one of the more unique shows that I have seen so far this year, which admittedly is not saying much given that I've been stuck with covering only a few shows for the past couple years. Although, even if I were to watch more shows throughout the year, I would still say this is very unique to me considering this is my first time actually watching an indie cartoon and I enjoyed it. Honestly, when it comes to previous indie cartoons that I see people talk about, like Has Been Hotel, I always felt a little off-putted by them. That is not to say shows like it are bad, but I always look at them and think they're very different from what I usually see. Therefore, I should just skip it. The Amazing Digital Circus finally broke that for me. Sure, the show is far from perfect, and frankly, I feel like too many fans are overhyping it, which partially explains why there are already a lot of haters for it. But when you keep your expectations in check, you can easily enjoy it for what it is and get interested in seeing what's next. So how amazing is The Amazing Digital Circus really? Well, it's amazing enough for me to suggest that you should check out the pilot if you somehow haven't watched it already. But just keep your expectations in check, of course. But those are only my thoughts on the show so far. If you watched the pilot, what do you guys think of The Amazing Digital Circus so far? Let me know in the comments below and please give this video a like and subscribe for more content like this. Also, thanks again to Seb Maeda and MB Commandnerd for supporting this channel directly through Patreon. And thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all have a great day. See you in the next one.